Okay, Job chapter 37. Elihu has been dealing with Job, and Job has discussed his uh, self-righteousness, how good he was, how good he done. And Elihu has been showing Job how powerful God is. And we're going to pick up in chapter 37, we're going to look at the weather of God. I mean, storms, rain. And Job, if you're so important, can you control the weather? The media is so important, but they put on a weatherman, but can he control the weather? Now, the media may be able to control the governments and the people, but the weatherman can't do what God does. And this will be, the I believe this is the last chapter, and then God steps in. And Elihu says, chapter 37, verse 1, at this, everything he said so far, also my heart trembled and is moved out of place. Elihu has had a deep inside feeling with his heart. Now, it's not his heart is taken off, a lump in his throat. When we say that when that heart goes in, in your throat, I mean, your heart doesn't leave you the chest cavity, but we've had that feeling in a guy who's really into what he's telling Job, and he really believes what he's saying, and he's really looking out for Job. And we would all get that zeal in dealing with people, saved or lost. Hear attentively the voice of, uh, the noise of his voice, God's voice, and the sound that goes out of his mouth. Inspiration. He, God, directed it under the whole heaven, and is lightning unto the ends of the earth. And it's talking about God's voice. It's quick, it's wonderful, it's powerful. Job has said, I have seen the words of God more than my necessary food. And Elihu says, really? If you have, you wouldn't be putting yourself on a pedestal. You would have said, you know, God has given me the power to help the elderly. God has given me the power to help the widows. God has put me in position to do what I'm doing. The word of God is important because the word of God is what tells us. The word is the instruction of life. Now remember, Job doesn't have a Bible. Job is the first chronicle order of the Bible long before Genesis is written. And according to the book of Job, the first book that was written in the Bible, it would be before Genesis, we put the books of the Bible in order, it is told to us that God spoke to man. And yet he speaks to us through the word of God. And when the disciples went out to the book of Acts, and said they had signs and miracles and healings and drink up poison of snakes and resurrection of dead people, that is until Mark said the fullness of the word of God. Can I drink poison and survive? No. Can I heal anybody? I wish I could, but I can't. Why? Because I have 66 completed books of the Bible, and people don't need to see works to fulfill the Word of God. Now we're living by faith. Faith is the hub, the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of not things not seen. Jews require a sign, not Gentiles. And when I preach on the streets, I'm to tell people the gospel. You're to believe that by faith, not me doing a magic trick. Though there are Christian magicians out there defying the word of God. Christian magicians are doing signs and wonders where the Bible says that's not for us. That's for Jews. And they'll say, well, it's Bible. Okay, what's your audience? Is your audience Jewish people? No, then you don't do signs and wonders called deceiving after it a voice roar it that's what a lion does jesus is the, is the lion the tribe of judah he thundereth with his voice of excellency and a lot of the old time people probably died out by now with the stew that remained they would think during the thunderstorms they would say it was actually god shaking how can you describe, and we've had some good thunderstorms in my lifetime, where you're sitting in a house and the whole house rattles. What does that? Oh, the cold air mixes with the warm air. Baloney. 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 It's God. 
There's one time that, that God, uh, I forget, God spoke to Jesus, or I think it was Paul, they're saying it thundered. Scripture was scripture when it thunders. What are you doing? It's God. One of these days, I don't know how it's going to happen. I don't know what the world's when the, when the rapture happens and God calls our name, but he knows his sheep by name. I don't know if the world's going to hear a thunder and we're going to hear, styley, come up hither. And they're going to say, wow, it's a good, wonderful thunderstorm. Where, where did a group of people go? And remember, we're not looking for a trumpet. We're looking for a trump. And not Donald Trump. It says, the voice roars, he thunders with the voice of his excellency, royalty, almightiness. And he will not stay them when his voice is heard. That's the rapture. At that moment when the rapture and the thunder and the, thunder and the trump of God style come up hither, nothing's going to stop me from going up to the clouds. Though Pharaoh come up behind the Israelites to the Red Sea, Pharaoh, you stay dead in the Red Sea. I'm going to the clouds. You can put a chain on me. You can put me inside of a coffin. You can put me inside of a concrete barrier. You can put six feet of dirt on top of me. You can plant a tree on top of me. You can put the great pyramids on top of me. You're not stopping me from going up in the rapture. And there were any Egyptians saved in our, by the, the pyramids in Egypt, they're going up to the pyramids. If there were anybody in the Titanic who was saved and down the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean, they're going up. If there's anybody in our U.S. subs that died in World War II in the Pacific, if there's anybody say they're going up, American, Japanese, you both of the German, if there's any saved, they're going up. You're not going to stop. What great and wonderful power we have in God. That's the rapture. Glory to God. Stay means stop. Then that his voice is heard, God's voice. We're going to hear God's voice one day. And then we're going to be looking down from the clouds like, wow, what was that? Moment, twinkling. <coughs> God thundereth marvelously with his voice. So there's going to be a thunder beyond what a thunder. Look for a cloudy day. We're going to meet in the clouds, correct? Look for a thunderful day. That rapture is going to happen probably if I take the Bible literal, if I can take this literal, I think you can. I'm not going to take eating and drinking the literal body of Jesus. That, that's not literal. I think in the tribute, I think in the millennium, I think the trees are going to clap their hands like the Bible. I take that literal. It may not be literal. It could be. And if I take this literal, the rapture, what the Bible says, it, it's going to be a cloudy day. We're going to meet in the clouds. It could be a possibly it's going to be a thunder thunder day all over the world. Well, here, we're interesting about the fact is we got thunderstorms all over the world. You just start seeing people pop away, maybe. I don't think anything. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong, but this is possibly scripture with scripture. At least there's going to be a, a sound of a thunder that unsaved people say it thundered. And to those that are known by God, by name, our names go up. Great things do with he. What great thing can it be? He calls out those that are saved and leaves behind those that are not saved. He divides the sheep from the goats at the second advent. He's going to divide the Christians from those that are not saved at the rapture of the church. You can be sitting inside of a church. When the rapture happens, those that are saved are leaving the assembly. <laughs> and those that are not saved are staying behind. All over the world. Those that are saved are going. And the ground ain't going to stop you if you're dead. If you're dead, you're going up first. If you're alive, you go up and follow afterwards. That's a great thing. Great things he's done. Do with he. Which cannot comprehend. The world's not going to know what happens. And it's going to be amazement to us Christians. Because one moment, there you are in the clouds. You got your arms around your mother, your father, who are saved that long past, many years ago. You're there with your children, and then you realize that moment you're forever with your children. There'll be no more goodbyes. There'll be no more death. That moment you realize, okay, we're going to go through the judgment seat of Christ, but after that, no more sin. And when we go up with the clouds, those that are dead in Christ rise up first, and those that are alive will shall be come up together in the clouds, meet together, the body of Christ, and then we go see Jesus. Glory to God. For he saith to the snow, okay, snow, I don't like snow, be thou on the earth. 
Well, you see that this this cold front is coming down, going to cross across America. It's going. God said. The Bible said. The Holy Spirit said. God says snow be there. Well, we're having quite weird. It, it's actually snowing where it's never snow. People, God said, let it snow. Tell the weatherman to shut up. Tell the weatherman to get on his knees, and repent to God. Yeah. Maybe you know if he repents to God, and he, God, please help me. There's people who want to go on picnics. There's people who want to go on vacations. Lord God, help me to guide them so they don't get in trouble. Okay. Tell him to get on his knees, and repent. Be thou on the earth, likewise to the small rain, and to the great rain, and that would be the. In Israel, that'd be the latter and the early and latter rains, second advent of his strength. We're looking at the rapture, we're looking at the second advent. During seven years of period of rain with Elijah, thank you very much, there's going to be no rain in the tribulation period. God is going to bless that Jewish people in his land when Jesus comes, they're going to get the rain that has been lacking. Remember, the tribulation period is coming to a time that every body of water is going to be blood. The repeat of the Egyptians of the book of Exodus. <laughs> Glory to God. <gasps> so the rain is God. He seals up his hand of every man. That all men may know this work. What is it? That's your fingerprint. In our hands there's a seal. And if, if I were to if I were to be arrested and take me down to the police station, they're going to put a seal on a piece of cardboard, and that seal of ten fingers is going to say, "This is Stanley Hayward." My my fingerprints are on record. I had I've had jobs, top secret clearances. I've had in jobs where I had to be clarified. I had to be, you know, put my my name in record. I've had to have my my fingerprints not for crime. But for identification, my fingerprints are on, on file somewhere. And they run my fingerprints. They're not going to get Charlie Brown. They're not going to get Tom Smith. They're going to get Stiley Hayward because my fingerprints matches my fingerprint. It's a seal. Almost like a king who takes a signet, the only kind of ring that he has, and he puts a seal. I got a royal seal by God. It's my fingerprint. <laughs> then the beasts go into den. Hibernation, get away from the weather, and remain in their places. Okay, that'd be hibernation. Out of the south cometh the whirlwind. Whirlwind is found in the Bible. Whirlwind's coming up pretty soon with the book of Job. God, <coughs> going to speak out of whirlwind. There's something going on in the tribulation period, because Job is a picture of the tribulation saying, <coughs> excuse me, allergies here. There's going to be something with the whirlwind in the tribulation period. I don't understand it. And now, and wait a minute. South Carolina whirlwind and cold out of the north. When you lived up where I lived in New England, the cold front from Canada comes down and you're going to get cold. And when that cold front from Canada comes down, thank you very much, and it goes down low enough, Florida will get cold weather from Canada. I wish they keep it. They need to have the cold, you know, have a passport, whatever, but... Job is the first book of the Bible. Job, you don't go to meteorological school. And Job, Elihu, to the inspiration of God, tells us where the weather comes from. And he didn't go to college. And they don't know nothing because they're ignorant, archaic people back then who don't, you know, don't just rub two sticks together and make a fire. That's garbage. Look what he knows. All right, here we go. By the breath of God, frost is given. The breath of God is life. God breathed in a man and became a living soul. The breath of God, the Holy Spirit, gives us the word of God. And God says, you see frost? Yeah, that's God. <laughs> and the breath of the waters is straightened. Also by watering, he wearieth the thick cloud. Clouds of tribulation. Second advent. He cometh with clouds. Also at the second advent. He says uh, a couple times in the gospel, he says, the Son of Man cometh in clouds with his angels. We gather in the clouds. When Christ comes, the clouds are coming too with angels. All rapture, all tribulation, second advent passages. He scatters his bright cloud. 
You know what that bright cloud is? At the end of the tribulation period, the seven years, there's no moon, no stars, no light at all. They're going to see this light coming, 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 coming. It's going to be a cloud. It's going to be a bright cloud. It's the light of Jesus Christ. They're going to take their idols and images, throw it in the holes of the cage, because here comes the train to run them over. The light right now, well, I see the light of death. That's the devil. The devil's appearance is an angel of light. You wait till the light comes. Jesus says, I'm the light of the world. Wait till this complete outer darkness at the end of the seven years, and Jesus comes, that light. That light will be for the Jew, you know. John chapter 1 says, he is the light. John chapter 1 is written to the Jews. He came on his own, his own received him not. It is turned round about by his counsel. God's counsel. That they may do whatsoever he commanded them upon the face of the world <laughs> in the earth. God's in control. The devil's in control of weather too, you know. But we're coming to the time that devil's going to be snatched up. He's going to be chained up for a thousand years. Everything will be of the will of God. <laughs> when the Antichrist comes, he's going to call fire down from heaven. He's going to call with storms. The magicians in Exodus time did that what Aaron was done by God. Exodus is coming back. You know why Exodus is coming back? Because the Hebrew scholars that go to temple and go to synagogue, when they study the Exodus, they study the book of Moses, and they learn the book of Moses, they're going to be in the tribulation period. Oh, this is, this is, this is familiar. And they're going to go back into Exodus and say, wow, it's happening all over again. They're not going to look for Moses. They're going to look for the Lamb of God. They're going to look for, they're going to look for that Passover Lamb that's going to come from the sky. The Messiah. He causes it, he causes it to come, whether for correction, that's the first time that word shows up, or for his land, or for mercy. What's he talking about? He's talking about the weather. Oh, we just got a whole amount of snow here. I mean, records amount of snow. All right, correction. You're not going to work. You're not doing nothing. You're going to lose money. You can't, I mean, you're dead. You can't move around. You're stalled. Or snow has treasure of nitrogen. And when that snow melts and it puts the nitrogen back in the ground for the land, you're going to be able to grow crops, better crops. Flood waters come so much rain because God, hey, listen, you, you sin. Now, God said there'll be no worldwide flood again of Noah, but he didn't say there would be no floods. Listen, when Japan had those floods years ago, well, it seemed like yesterday, that's because that nation doesn't worship God. They worship other gods. And God will use weather as judgment. He did it with Noah's time. And I believe all these hurricanes, I believe all these tornadoes is an act of God. Your insurance company said, in, in case of an act of God. How come the insurance company knows it, but everybody else does it? It's El Nemo. No, it's not El Nemo. It's El Gato. He's trying to get your attention on. And you're not listening to him. The weather you get, the weather problems you get, you're supposed to listen to that preacher. You're supposed to listen to that Christian. You're supposed to open your Bible and see what God has to say. You know how many earthquakes? I was just reading today that, that Jesus died, he's buried, and he's rose. You know how many earthquakes happened there at the time? At least two or three of them. You know how many people came running to the tomb that asked Jesus what happened? Absolutely none of them. The women came looking for a dead body. You know, it says after Jesus' resurrection that the saints came out of the graves. Nobody ran to Jesus and said, hey, you know, we believe you're the Son of God. What's going on here? So when these phenomena happen, earthquakes, tornadoes, and all this weather, how come, you know, how come they don't turn to church? How come they don't turn to God? They didn't turn to Jesus when he was walking the face of the earth. But was it that uh, Solomon says in the... Uh, uh, Song equally asy, nothing new under the sun. Hearken unto this, O Job. Stand still. <laughs> Is he going somewhere? <laughs> I mean, let's say 
you know, you're with your family, something like that, and whatever, you're sitting down, like we're sitting down, have a family class, and I say, uh, Tracy, stand still. No, she's sitting down. I wouldn't say that to her. If, if she's about to get up and get get something in the kitchen, man, Tracy, stop. I got it. I got something right here. Would you want that? Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay, that's what I want. Job is getting up and walking away. <laughs> Stand still. Get the, get the, the, read the Bible, study the Bible. Stay, Job, wait, stop. Stand still, listen to me. What do you say? Consider the works of, consider the wondrous works of God. The weather. Plain and simple, the weather works of God. God makes it rain. And they flow down the streams, they go into the ocean, and the ocean salt water, and it evaporates, goes back in the clouds, and recirculates itself to do it all over again. It does not rain salt water. And we will read about that. Solomon writes about that, I believe, in Ecclesiastes. Weather is a phenomenon. They don't understand lightning. They don't understand thunder. They can't make it do weather. The devil can. It's a wonderful work of God. Does Thou know when God disposed thee and caused the light of his cloud to shine? The second advent reference. Dost thou know the balances of the clouds? Do you know how much a cloud weighs? And the wondrous works of him, God, which is perfect in knowledge. God has all the knowledge of everything. You got troubles and problems? You know who knows about it? God. He's got all knowledge. You know what knowledge is? Knowledge is what you know. Wisdom is how to apply what you know. Understand how to apply the app. No, no, no. All the volumes of books, God wrote the book. And there are things on the books that God knows that man don't know, and man's lied about it. Man can't even explain gravity. God knows everything about gravity. How thy garments are worn. How does your clothes make you warm? Have you not? Uh, like today, I, I was taking, I was laying down. I, I thought I was wearing shorts because my legs were cold, but I'm wearing long pants. Explain to me, Mister Scientific Man, how clothing makes me warm. That's the question. When he quiets the earth by the south wind, I don't know what that means. I'm not a weather person. Something with the sound went, went calm weather. North wind, cold weather, storm. Hath thou Job with him, God, spread out the sky? Job, you're so important. Did you put those clouds up there? Did you put those stars up there? What about that moon? What about that? How'd you do with that, Job? And God's going to ask Job the very same questions Elihu's doing. God, Jehovah, is going to confirm Elihu. Come on, Joe. You took care of a, of a, of a widow? Really? All right, make the sun come up. There's going to be a man coming up, Job, that he's going to say, God, stop the sun and stop the moon in the skies, Joshua. And God's going to do it. There's going to be a king that God says, listen, put your house in order, you're going to die. He, he, he balls, he cries before God, and God says, listen, okay, I'm going to give you extra life. I'll give you a sign. I'll put the sun right back where it was before Joshua's time. You do that, Job? Have this, you know, I pray when I get up in the morning, everyone gets, you know, they hit that, they hit that alarm clock the second, third, fourth time. Well, you know what, Lord, just keep the moon there for a little while until I'm ready to get up. It ain't going to happen. Jesus said, for the elect's sake, the days will be shortened. Try shorten the day. But for the elect's sake, the time will be shortened. God can control that. Jesus can control that. Hast thou spread out the sky, which is strong, and as a molten looking glass? That's Revelation. That's that throne. That's that clear sea before the throne. Revelation chapter 4, I believe it is. If not, it's later. When there's a throne of God and there's a river. And according to the Holy Spirit, Job of Lie, who'd never been there, it's like a mirror. When we go up there, we look into that river, we're going to see our face. We're going to see God's reflection. 
We're going to see that light shining off. We're going to need new eyeballs when we get to heaven. The eyeballs we have right now are going to blow them. Maybe that's where Paul got his bad eyesight. But look, look at the impact of the book of Job. Our pastor said the other day, there's people who don't read the Old Testament. I can't stand it. The Old Testament just told me there's a rapture. It may sound like the, the trump, the, the thunder of God. It may sound like the wind, the thunder of a thunderstorm. Hey, that's good information. When I get to heaven, I'm going to say, oh, there's that. Yeah, it looks like a mirror, just like Job said, the Old Testament. And Jesus says, search the scriptures, for in them you find me. There was no Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Romans, 1st, 2nd, Corinthians, Titus. There was none of that when Jesus said that. It was only the Old Testament. We're getting a glimpse of heaven before the book of Revelation, Job 37. We're getting a glimpse of the rapture before, uh, let's see, 1st and 2nd Thessalonians, I forget. We're getting weather patterns in B.C. 1520. And I didn't have to go to weather school. I don't want to go to weather school. I'll turn to my Bible. Jesus said, red sky in the morning. They say red sky at night, say it was the light, red sky in the morning, uh, say it was morning. Jesus said that in between 30 AD and 33 AD. Stealing from God. Teach us what we shall say unto him, God. For we cannot order our speech by reason of darkness. There's come a day we're going to face God. We're going to talk to God. <coughs> you know what, Job? That's the next chapter. I'm going to face Jesus Christ one day. As a saved man, only by the power of Jesus Christ, and I'm a sinner. I'm going to fall down and worship his feet. I don't think I'm going to be as bold as Peter. There are going to be lost men who never received Christ going to face Jesus Christ one day. And the Bible says in Matthew 12, every idle word they shall give an account. Woe to them. Darkness. I, I, I don't know what happened. If someone came up to me and said, pull a gun in my head. You tell me what heaven's completely like right now. I'm going to pull the trigger. Pull the trigger, then I'll tell you what heaven's like. Perhaps I'm from the body present of the Lord, but I ain't coming back to tell you. And even then, when I go to heaven today, that ain't at all. Man, when I, if I go to heaven right now, I'm going to see the devil in heaven one day, up there right now. I'm going to see a, a heavenly asteroid war without, you know, any powers or forces. Because I'm going to see the devil fight Michael and the angels. I ain't going to get glory. I ain't going to have my tears wiped away to, to what Revelation 20 and 21 said when I get to New Jerusalem. I'm not going to New Jerusalem if I would die right now. If the rapture happened right now, it would be at least a thousand seven years, if not how long, to New Jerusalem. And even when I get New Jerusalem, there's no more time. I don't get New Jerusalem to every man that's lost gets judged at the Great White Throne Judgment. That comes later. Shall it be told him, God, that I speak? The devil tells God, the revelation says he, he's the, oh boy, I forget. I know he's the adversary, but he, he tells on us. In Job chapter 1 and 2, he tells God about Job. I'll think about the word tonight when I'm sleeping. If a man speak, shall, surely he shall be swallowed up. <laughs> swallowed up in the holiness of God. The accuser of our brethren. That's what it is. The devil accuses. If I were to speak, God's holiness is going to overpower me. I will have nothing to say. A lost man will have absolute. I will only plead the blood of Jesus. That's it, God. That's how I can get in. A lost man has nothing to say. And now man, men, see not the bright light which is in the clouds. It's coming a bright light in the clouds one day, and it's Jesus. But the wind passes and cleanseth them. The Jews, I'll give them a new heart and a new spirit. Kind of interesting there. 
Fair weather cometh out of the north. Oh, there we go. There's the weather. With God is terrible majesty. Not terrible doesn't mean mean, nasty. That terrible means it inspires terror that God is so, so holy. God is so almighty. God is so, so. You want to fall. God told Moses, you can't see my face or else you die. And when Moses saw God, he had to put a veil on his face. Israel couldn't even look at him. People say, well, show me. I've had people tell me in the ministry, show me Jesus. You couldn't bear to see Jesus. Not in his holiness. When Peter, James, and John woke up and they're on the Mount Transfiguration, man, that, he was what? He was what? He was bright. Isn't that like the bright cloud right now? As Jesus comes back in, in the second advent, he's going to be like he was on the Mount Transfiguration, bright and shiny, clean. Touching the Almighty God, we cannot find him out. Oh, all the things about God. What did God do before Genesis chapter 1? <laughs> what is God doing right now? How, how are you able to tell things in your life right now what God's going to do tomorrow? <laughs> I have no idea. He is excellent, God, in power. Let's see, he can flood the whole earth. He can guide a nation into the promised land. He can heal. The, he can raise the dead. He can forgive us of our sins. And in judgment, God's judge. And in plenty of justice, God is just. He will not afflict, suffer. Men do therefore fear him. They ought to. Many do not. He respecteth not any that are wise of heart. Pride. They got wise in himself, Job. Self-righteous. Job, he doesn't respect you right now. Because you're not giving him the glory. You're not giving him the honor. And to that, God's going to speak up next. As we get close into the book. 